Sing my song in Suffolk, the only place to be. Coming in. And Mr. Chase receives a token as a train heads towards Haverhill platform. This film was taken in the 1950s. As you see, the footbridge is still there. The train now departs from Haverhill Station towards Cambridge. Not much activity at Haverhill Station. W.H. Smith bookstore is closed. Mr. Horace Eaves walking along a platform. This was the forecourt of Haverhill Station. You should have guessed by now where this is. The old police station, Queen Square. And Glasswells, which is now A.B. Hearts. The co-op before it was altered and the high street. Taken from the top of the Playhouse Cinema, looking up the High Street. And down. You notice merchants. And the old post office. Kangle School. and the old shops of Queen Street. Fine Fair was just opening here. Woolworths hadn't yet been completed. Council officers haven't changed much. Kangle School, which is now boarded up and looks an eyesore. And the rope works, which is gone. The high street here shows Copsey's fish shop and the florists. And as usual, the toilet locked up. Now in 
Holland's Road with the start of uh, RA refrigeration factories being built. And not much, not much else. The relief road hadn't been opened about two weeks. You can see Rage Richardson's house on the right hand side since gone. chimney. Standing now at the top of North Avenue, looking down Eastern Avenue, the road joining North Avenue was yet to be completed. Queensway, the fish shop, And looking towards the Clements and a view from the top of the water tower. And this is the second. This is the second Haverhill flood and the manhole is at the top of the hill at Ratting Road near what's now called Westbourne Court. This is the Kangle Corner underwater. Quite sharp current on the water too. The windows reflected in the water. Later that morning we went back and the waters had receded and it was possible then to get with a little difficulty into Queen Street. The parents had to go into the school to help clear up the damage, it was closed for several days. The boat was a little bit late, the water was well on its way down. This is the Rose and Crown Hotel. Queen Street still underwater. Or rather, demolition work of the houses where Mr. Mortlock used to live and Mrs. Stebbing by the old mill house in Ratting Road. The place that's now called Millfields Way ran round about here. It's early one Sunday morning.
Mr. Turner's directing the traffic while his mates knock the houses down with the shovel of that excavator thing, dumper truck. Milkman's now moved on a bit further up the road. Adderton and Ellis is at the other end of the town and this is where they're making the last wagon wheel ever. Mr Don Darking made all the wooden parts of the wheel which are off to one side and the fire is surrounding the iron tyre heating it up and then the tyre is put over the wood and watered quickly to prevent the wood burning and it's now shrinking the parts, the, all the different wooden parts together to hold them in the wheel shape. Second tyre is now in the fire, out of the fire now, hot, being carried across to the wheel, the wooden parts of the wheel which was already waiting for it. Proudly made the two wheels. The wheels you've just seen belong to Neville Haylock of Hanshit End, and some 25 years later he gave me one, and we've now made a feature of it in our garden. This is Ratting Road and Station Road at Haverhill as it was in the 1900s. You see the old toilet at the bottom of the Station Road and the trees in the background. Hill Station, Forecourt, with the Station Master's house on the left hand side. This is the site as it is today. Yeah. Yeah, 
Ratting Road Bridge with the engine standing on the top. The same view showing the footbridge that replaced the railway bridge. Standing the other side of the station, looking towards Cambridge, the engine, the Sudbury train, waiting for the off. as it is today. Standing between the platforms, looking towards Sturmer, the Haverhill station had just been closed in 1967. This is the same site. Looking towards the good shed, which still stands. The good shed is now the council depot has been added to the old signal box been vandalized since the closure of the railway standing on the same side. The railway engine you see is coming from behind the cricket ground towards Haverhill Station. standing in the same position. Fiber Lane Bridge from the top, looking towards Haverhill Station. Sturmer Arches. It doesn't look possible that the Colm Valley Railway ran over this track. Standing on top of Sturmer Arches. And a view over the top looking towards Hamlet Green. Fiber Lane Bridge you used to be able to turn right here and go along and up the chalk stones. still stands in the good yard, coal yard, 
and still visible is the iron, uh, the iron gutter or curbing. part of the original footpath. Now looking down Station Road towards the Rosen Crown and our new roundabouts. Animal Shelter near Godmanchester, they have a bit of old Haverhill, the fountain which stood at the junction you have just seen on the last shots. Ruffles Mill, the only annular mill in the country. It was said to be a landmark to lead the German aircraft to Stradual Aerodrome, so it was demolished in 1940. It stood in the Millfield Road area of Haverhill. This is an early view taken from the air of Haverhill. <coughs> you see Haverhill Church, the recreation ground. This was Clements Lane. There's first meadow, second meadow gravel pit meadow with the gravel pit and cuckoo. The Clements estate on this site now hasn't been started. This was Bedford's yard. And Reg Richardson's house. Another aerial view of Haverhill shows at the top picture here the fields of Withersfield and the village of Withersfield. You've got Withersfield Road coming in to the High Street, and the old dependent church, St Mary's Church is here, and the railway station and buffer depot. Beyond the old dependent, down the hamlet, Manor Farm Dairies and the Hamlet Croft. In closer detail, you have the old dependent church St. Mary's Church
Gertine's factory showing the factory chimney. The relief road was not yet built. Lord's Croft Lane finished here and the footpath through to Rage Richardson's house. Bedford Yard is here and Fibre Lane goes across here. The railway station is at the top of the picture with the houses of Ratting Road. The Downs Estate was not built here, but it shows the houses of Colne Road and my house at the end of the garden. Hovis Mill stands out. The Corn Exchange, the West End, and the cattle pens of the old sale yard behind. Addis factory with the old silk factory, the oldest part of Addis in the foreground. Another aerial view of Haverhill. On this view you can see the railway line coming from Birdbrook, the Coal Valley, to Coal Valley Station. The line also comes round over Sturmer Arches and down beside the Sturmer line down at the Haverhill Station. This shows it in more detail with the Coal Valley line coming in by the Hamlet Croft and finishing behind Addis. The relief road has been built here and this shows Sterner Arches, Aston Ellis, Healy Metals, projects. Gertine's factory. The old mat factory and the chimney which used to stand 90 foot tall. St. Mary's Church Tower stands 80 foot tall. Notice the old houses around the church, Pease Hill. This shows the cricket ground. The sports centre hasn't been built yet, but it also shows an old familiar footpath called Fibre Lane, which goes from here, Ridge Richardson's house, along underneath the railway and up to Chalkson Hills. Fibre Lane got its name by the fibre waste from Gertine's factory 
been laid down and made a nice springy footpath. The Kangle Corner showing the Woolpack and the Kangle School and Station Road. The Downs Estate leading off from Crowland Road. Our house in Crowland Road. Gardens behind. Next door's greenhouse stands out. From Coron Road, you go across to the cemetery. Cenotaph. Recreation Road and the Recreation Ground. These aerial photographs were kindly lent to me by John Ives. Mostly on outside. Thank you. 
door.
jugs and bottles from the Haverhill breweries. houses in Haverhill in Camps Road and this of the Camps Road with the part of the recreation ground taken January 1994 more or less the same position in Camps Road showing the old place farm as it was in the 1940s of Haverhill Station. Taken also in the 1940s, 50s. Yard as it was. signal box booking office the forecourt of the station coming in from Sturmer. A view from the diesel cab going towards Burbank on the Colm Valley line. Cambridge University used to run a train on Sunday afternoons from Cambridge to Haverhill. This is a shot going under the Horsey Viaduct. Same university train coming down the Horsey Cutting. Chapman's shop, an unwin's house with a greenhouse or conservatory on the end. garage and the doctor's surgery which used to stand next door. A.B. Hart's shop was next door to the doctor's in the high street.
Cleo showroom and the playhouse.
scarlet fever. Haverhill Town Hall. This was given to the town in 1883 by Daniel Gertin Sr. Note the two gas lamps outside the town hall. This is an early photograph taken before any proper pavements had been laid. The building on the left of the porch became much later Withers Garage and is now the site of the provincial insurance building. This was Mason's Yard on the right hand side opposite the provincial buildings and across the street is now the Ram Pub or which was the Ram Public House now Glasswell's Furniture Store. Griffiths Jones is on the right hand side of this shot next to the Red Lion Public House. Opposite side of the road would be Woolworths. This is taken in the 1860s of Chaudry House on the right hand side, with the wall was where Cleo's garage used to be. The Haverhill Co op, just newly built, taken from the top of the church tower. This was taken in 1868. It shows the post office on the extreme right, which was a coffee house. The ladder leaning against the wall is the Bell Hotel. St Mary's Church gives a clue of this part of the town, with Peace Hill Slade on the side and the co-op butchers on the right hand side which is now Murray's. In Wittersfield Road is the Rose and Crown. The medieval origin. The man with the hand cart may just have brought someone's luggage down from the station. Hill North Station notices the iron footbridge has not been built, nor the canopies over the platform. And this was Mrs. Emma Gertine, widow of Daniel Gertine Jr. She poses in her gleaming carriage outside the conservatory of Dudley House. Chauntry Road, showing Gertine's factory chimney in the background, with a milkman doing his round. Camps Road, St Mary's Church Hall on the left hand side, now made or converted into houses. And the old brewery on the right hand side and left hand side far uh, distance is uh, now the laundry. Here we see the co-op butchers as it was years ago with Mr. Titus Sizer standing outside. Inside Gertine's factory, the hair rooms, making hair cloth for the clothing industry. About 1909. And this is the 
ready made, made and ready made clothing, um, sewing machines. They went powered by electricity, the steam engine was not fast enough to drive them. The old swimming pool at Haverhill Waterworks. It was murky water and day the gents went the other. And this is at Hatchet Hall with a 1903 Panard car. The building in the background still stands. rest on the recreation ground in Victorian times. This was the Greyhound public house where Gertine's factory gates are. If you look on the right hand side of the factory gates, you'll see one of the greyhound heads, which you can see on the front of the pub, still on the side of the wall. This was the White Horse public house. On the left hand side was Paul's the Ironmongers, you can see the gateway, later the Beatton and Alice Ironworks uh, hardware shop. This was the Butcher's Arms. It's where the new White Hart public house stands. This was the Three Goats in the High Street. The provincial insurance building now, op now occupies this site. Looking at the corner of Camps Road and the co-op on the right hand side, which is now Graham's the Chemist, 1905. Ah, uh, showing the railway station on the left hand side. The old White Hart public house being renovated, which stood on the corner of Dudry Road or Dudry Hill. The other, the other side of the dock of surgery was Cleo's. Burton coaches The town of Haverhill is not a new town, but an overspell town. Now, it's not a very nice word, overspell, but it's a word that says what it means. If you've got too much of something, then something needs to be spelt over. And what we have far too much of in this country at the moment, in our cities, and particularly in London, is people. Now, some of them must be spelt out into country towns, not only so that they can live more comfortable lives, but so they can give elbow room to the people left behind. Now, some critics think that the government hasn't moved fast enough in the evacuation of our cities. 
And in fact, although it does encourage industrial firms to move out of London, what usually happens is that as one firm goes out, another one moves into the same place, bringing even more employees with it. And London is now reaching bursting point. It's here that the London County Council's overspill plan comes in. The London County Council, as it rebuilds on overcrowded slum property, is putting up less housing than before. And this means that more and more people are going onto the rapidly expanding housing lists. It's from these housing lists that people are invited to go out to the expanded towns. Towns expanded with the financial help of the London County Council. About 1,500 of us from London have now come to live in Haverhill under the LCC overspill scheme. For most of us, it was a chance for a house, and this we were all very pleased to take. Now, these are our new houses that you can see around us, and I think most of us are very comfortable in them. But, Dreen, you have been here five years, and how have, have you settled down? Well, I must admit that when I first came here, I hated it. I thought I'd come to the back of beyond. But I made an effort, and I went out to meet people, and I joined something, and now I can say I've made a lot of friends, and I'm perfectly content. I don't think I would have settled at all if it hadn't been for joining these outside organisations. And the only thing is, you must go out to meet people because the country, the people from the country will not come and meet you. They're, they're very quiet and you have to get to know them. But um, also the industries here are very poor. They, they bring such um, small industries in and they're not, not big enough for the amount of men that, that need the jobs. Um, as I know, I found um, my husband had to um, go to London for six months to work and travel backwards and forwards for the six months which wasn't very satisfactory, but um, apart from that, um, also I'd like to see some more buses. We have no buses at all. We can't <laughs> get anywhere. Um, we have a car, fortunately, but quite a few people haven't, and uh, therefore I think that uh, we need these things, you know. We yes, must have a bus yes. or something. What do you think about that, Pam? Yes, well, I think, as I say, that the bus service, if you haven't got a car, you're tied to the town. Right? Yes. But, um, I would like to say that since we came from Bermondsey, we've only been since February, but um, we're getting settled. I've made a lot of friends through going out and meeting people. And um, I've noticed with our little girl that um, she's been so much better, yes. healthier, oh, yes. put on a lot of weight. For the children. Mm. Yes. And yes. I think when we look at her and we see what it's done just this few months being here, we, yes. we say, well, it was agree. worth it. I yes. tried to agree. In the meantime, one must be very grateful for the few industrial firms who have the wisdom to move out of London. The wisdom to see that it is not only to the advantage of the country that they do so, but a very great advantage to themselves as well. We are architectural metal workers and neon sign and lighting specialists. In fact, this month just sees the completion of our second year at Haverhill. All our men that we move from London, and from our point of view, the move is working extremely well. Well, Frank, you've been with the company now for six years. What do you think of the move to Haverhill? Oh, quite a good move. I quite like it down here. Like most people do. It's got me snakes. So, I most of these things have. But I think they'll all be ironed out in, in time, anyway. Big snake. It's always transport here, isn't it? No two ways about that. Mm. How's your wife find things down here? Well, it's tougher for the women, there's no doubt about that. I mean, we're all right, we come up with a firm, with blokes, you know, and you're with them all day, but you pick a woman up, we dump in the middle of the country and say, there you are, and she's got to get on with it. I believe your wife has joined one or two of the organisations, oh, yeah, she's oh, well, actually, we do, we do more socially now than uh, we did in London. Well, here, mate. Eh? sort of make you join and they want something you can do it and then uh, well if we know what you're doing you're in it and what do you think of things Peter? well I find it not too bad a bit of a tear away from London but uh, I got mainly what I wanted a house travelling the mean it is are not very good It'd be even worse than we if they take the railway as they're talking about uh, the uh, shops reasonable could be better with a young baby, how's your wife find things down here? Not too bad. The uh, be better, I suppose, when they get the welfare centre clinic sorted out and finished. And what do you think of the shops? Well, it finds the cost of living a little bit higher down here than in London, but uh, on the whole, they're not too bad. You can get mostly what you want. 
at uh, reasonable prices. Now for a young unmarried chappy. Well, um, I think it's been a, a very good move as far as I'm concerned. Um, I like the people up here. I've settled in very well indeed. And I most certainly wouldn't go back to London. I think it's a marvellous place for young people. The main snag is for entertainment for young people is they have to go to Cambridge. But um, that can be managed. Um, I know most of them either go up by car or motorbike or else they're, they can go up by train. But that means that they can't have the evening up there. I think that has been the main snag up here is transport for young people for entertainments. In Haverhill there is very, very little. In Cambridge there's a lot but it, the trouble is getting there. I'll take it from what you've said, Peter, that you're quite happy here. I wouldn't go back to London. Yes, um, you're quite right. I wouldn't go back to London. I'm perfectly happy here, and I think it's a marvellous place. Now, first of all, before they can be invited, of course, firms have to go on ahead and create the job. So that's the pattern of it. The firm goes first, and then the people make their choice. If you can call it a choice at all, when it's a choice between staying behind in a rather dismal slum in a city they like, or going to bright new housing in a town they don't want to go to at all. But strange enough, some of them decide to stay behind. But maybe it's not so surprising. Speaking as half a Londoner and half an East Anglian, I don't think there'd be any great collision between these two groups of people. But I do understand this business of the curious magic that the big city has, the magic of London that holds people there, and if they go away, it draws them back again. And it's for this reason that I sympathize with the latest ideas of the planners who think that we should overspill not just 5,000 people onto a town of 5,000, as is being done at Haverhill, but 150,000 people onto a town which already has 150,000. Now, it's a proposal of this kind that's being looked at this month by the government for the expansion of the county town of East Suffolk, Ipswich. And the man who has prepared the study for the government believes there are three great advantages here. One is that you're taking a big bite at the problem instead of just nibbling at it. Secondly, by the means of the great influx of people, you have an opportunity of creating something of the magic of the city. And thirdly, and perhaps most important of all, because you're moving so much industry in, you have the chance of giving a great variety of jobs to all the people in the area. And the planner, Leonard Vincent, believes that this could be a very settled and satisfied sort of community. London is giving new life to this quiet Suffolk market town, the clerk of the Haverhill Urban Council, Mr. William Blake, tells his part of the story. Now, after many years of preparatory work, the Haverhill Town Expansion Scheme really began in June of 1958, when the then Minister of Housing and Local Government, Mr. Henry Brook, laid the foundation stone of the first factory. During the five years which have elapsed since that time, 22 firms have moved to Haverhill under the scheme, and five new firms are having factories built for them. When these latter are completed in a month or two's time, there will have been erected over 250,000 square foot of factory space, and work will have been found for 700 new people. 531 council houses have already been built, and 281 more are in course of construction. In addition, 120 private houses have been built and most of these are occupied by people who have moved to Haverhill under the scheme. Now, of course, in a scheme of this sort, problems are bound to arise, and you have heard of some of them already. With regard to employment, the um, council has always tried to get diversity of employment so that if there should be a slump in, in any particular industry, there is alternative employment available. We've also heard that... Uh, sometimes that there is a lack of entertainment. Well, now, quite clearly, in a small country town, there cannot be the same variety of entertainment as there is in London. But here we have a cinema, two dance halls, bingo halls, and so on, and there is a large variety of both recreational and cultural facilities available in the centre, which is attached to the new secondary school, and in the many clubs and associations which flourish in the town. With regard to shopping, few complaints are heard about the shopping facilities in Haverhill. This is not surprising, as under the scheme, very many fine new shops have been built. Now, a word about population. When the scheme started in 1958, the population of Haverhill was about 4,200. It is now something over 6,500, 
and the first expansion scheme is nearly halfway completed. So successful has this scheme been that both the London County Council and the Haverhill Council have applied to the Ministry of Housing and Local Government to carry out a similar scheme in the future. Uh, under this second scheme, the population is planned to increase to 18,500 by 1981. After that, well, who knows? Now, in conclusion, of course, this town expansion scheme has given to both the members and officers of the Haverhill Council a considerable amount of extra work. Uh, however, they have been wholeheartedly behind the scheme, and they have not minded this one little bit. In the first place, of course, they took the government at their word and were pioneers in carrying out this scheme of town expansion. Because of this, and with the aid of the other participating authorities, they have been enabled to provide homes from people living in London, often under very unsatisfactory conditions. And secondly, and lastly, they have been enabled to bring what was undoubtedly a dying town, their town of Haverhill, into a flourishing and growing community. And here's a song I've written especially for viewers in Suffolk. From Lowestoft to Layston, from Snape down to the coast, take a trip along to Thorpness, a folly there they boast. There's fun to find in Felixstowe, I'll see you at the spa. And from Dunwich down to Alborough, isn't very far I've seen the Grecian islands in the warm Ionian sea and I didn't like the crowds along the coast of Italy the charm of Spain I never found it wasn't meant for me so I'll sing my song in Suffolk the only place to be I'll watch the golden sunrise above the silver sea You can hear it wash the pebbles, so take a walk with me The fishermen returning home, their boats along the shore We can search in vain for amber, like we've always done before I've seen the Grecian islands from the warm Ionian sea And I didn't like the crowds along the coast of Italy The charm of Spain I never found It wasn't meant for me So I'll sing my song in Suffolk The only place to be From Warper's Wick to Southwold, by ferry we can go. We can stroll along the harbour in the evening twilight glow. I'll tell you all the little things I never got to say, and we'll spend our time together in our English sort of way. From Lowestoft to Layston. From Snape down to the coast And I'll sing my song in Suffolk It isn't very far I'll sing my song in Suffolk It isn't very far